This I is an important. This, is this one that came from a question paper last year, and the question here was asked: um, which of these um, cattle will definitely be homozygous? And once again, remember, there's a difference between homozygous and homologous. To the homologous, we'll get later. Homozygous refers to the genes, whether it's the same, both dominant or both recessive. Okay. Now, from this, I think it's easy to deduce that the recessive characteristic is the white. That is a white cow. And because these two, 1 and 8, are recessive, that's how we can deduce that they must be homozygous. Do you think we can know for sure about the others? What would you say? Where's our learners? They've been responding wonderfully. Right. The only one that we can be sure about, apart from these, will be the black bull. Because the offspring all, they all contain a white gene. So, but all of them also the black gene. You know, we're not sure, sorry, we're not sure. Usually we do that this is the capital capital, but we're not sure. Mm. We're simply not sure. And there you've got it. You see, what is, what is important is that learners should look, and this, that is why we gave them the previous slide to say mm. if you can memorize that. If you look at the first generation, the F1 year, you see both of them are black. You have here the black bull and cows, doesn't matter, but what you see there is why is it that they are both black? Which means that black must be the dominant allele, and this must have been two homozygous, um, two organisms that have been crossbred here to find this. And um, this is how you can go and test so that you can see. And this is to answer one of the questions that we had mm -hmm. what if both are dominant? Colin. Well, if you look at incomplete dominance, first of all, here we have no dominance or no recessive alleles because yet is a mixture or a blend of characteristics and normally we represent incomplete dominance with two capital letters. And what you have here is a red flower and we crossed it with a white flower and all the F1 generation offspring were pink which means it's a blend, and that is the absence of dominance. There is no dominant or recessive alleles, and that is why we, we, we speak about. And we don't only get it in flowers, eh? And if we should, there it shows you the Punnett square of why all of them are pink, and they are all heterozygous, but we also get it in cattle. Yeah, you see that the white and the red Sorry, just a moment. Still oh. the incomplete dominance. Mm. Can we just say here that with incomplete dominance, sorry, let's get back. Um, Colin, yeah, just to make sure, the best tip for them mm. to remember this is when you have a red and a white flower and you get the in-between pink, or a white and a black horse, for instance, and the in-between one is gray. gray. So the moment you've got this in-between condition, it's incomplete dominance, and you represent it with its different letters, all capital letters. And the in-between one will then be heterozygous with the two capital letters. And there you have the Punnett square. This is co-dominance, which is something different. And how does co-dominance differ from incomplete dominance? Okay. Here again we have where both alleles are equally dominant. And with equally dominant, with, that is why it's co-dominant. Both will be expressed in the phenotype. You either get a white carnation and you get a red carnation, but here you have a carnation where there's a blend, or not a blend, but otherwise it would have been pink both if it was colors, incomplete. Both colors are present but here. Both are present here and you see because both white and red were equally dominant. The same with the brown and the white. Yeah, you have a red bull maybe that was crossed with a white cow. And all the calves, yeah. And we, we refer to this as roan calves. And they have both the red and the white that come out in the phenotype. And this is what you see with co-dominance. So remember, we have complete dominance. And those were all the um, monohybrid crosses that we showed you in the beginning. Yeah. Then we have, you know, have to know incomplete dominance. And here we have co-dominance. And there's a question, so we can quickly show them. 
with the incomplete dominance incomplete dominance if you've got two <coughs> hybrids crossing with each other obviously that is what your gametes will be I'm quickly going to cross them see what do you think what do you get can you see that you get three different um, genotypes as well as three different phenotypes and there are three phenotypes, um, red, pink, white, and the genotypes, as you can see. And the ratios will be the same. With, up, with, with co-dominance, you will get the same thing. The only difference is that in this case, in this case, your color will not be a mix such as pink. It will be both. And, and if you go back to the slide again, I think with the coordinations that you put in, it's perfect understanding. They're red and white. They're not pink. They show both colors. And black groups is actually one of the co-dominance characteristics that our learners must know. And there you've got it. In the phenotype, we've got four blood groups. A, B, A, B, and O. I wonder if they can tell us which one of those four mm -hmm. is the co-dominant. Yeah, which one shows the co-dominant form in the blood groups? Okay, we're still waiting, but they will tell us just now. If you look at the genotypes, these are phenotypes. If you look at the genotypes, we get, we actually have three alleles. It's a dominant A, a dominant B, and a recessive. So it's I with an A, I with an A, or it can, that is now homozygous, or it can be heterozygous, dominant A and I. With B, it can be I, B, I, B, or I, B, I. It sounds, starts to sound like old McDonald out of farm, yeah, 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 oh. <laughs> but there you can see it once again. Can either be homozygous or heterozygous. With blood group B, homozygous, heterozygous. If we get the A allele, the dominant A allele, with the dominant B allele, then we don't have a one that's dominant over the other. We've got two different alleles here, an A and a B, but both of these alleles will express themselves in the phenotype, and that's why we have the blood group A, B. And with blood group O, then the two recessive genes. And this is the reason why O is the universal donor and AB is the universal acceptor. If you are blood group AB, you can receive blood from everybody. And if you are O, the blood service people are after your blood because you can donate to anybody. Right. Shall and we continue? To, yeah, we can continue, but just before we do mm. that, let's just emphasize the fact, because this is one of the other things that we see learners normally make a mistake, is they, they, don't, they can't identify which one do we write as the phenotype and which one as the genotype. Mm. So please make sure that the A, the B, the A, B, and O, the letters that you make, that's the phenotype. But when you to, uh, uh, write down the genotypes, remember A and B have two possibilities mm. of genotypes where A, B mm. and O only have the one. Yeah. Once again, the phenotype is, although you can't see the phenotype, but this is what the sister will put down on mm. your card when you go to be a blood donor. And yes, please do that. Okay, once again co-dominance. Two alleles expressed in the heterozygous individuals. We've got blood type, just to, to summarize, and this is something that you must know.